provides an overview of using MLA to document your sources for your papers. You already know by now, after reading, quoting, paraphrasing, and avoiding plagiarism, that when you use a source, you must give credit to that source. An MLA is a two-part system, which means you must give credit in the body of your essay using an attribution that could be something like according to Frank Smith, or by giving credit in parentheses at the end of the material that you've used. You also need to document that source on your Works Cited page. So what I'm going to take a look at right now is looking at this MLA sample research paper in Module 4. When I do that, it pops up here. This is a great reminder, too, about how to format your papers. So we're going to look briefly at the first paragraph and look to see how sources are woven in. If we look at this first paragraph, we can see here, this is the first time we find a source. There are many single parent families in the United States, and some of these may be families where the parents live together but are not married. Now this sounds like a summary, right, that was taken from Kuntz, there's the author's last name, and that this material was found on page 147. If we scroll all the way down, to the Works Cited page, we can find the full bibliographic information, and there it is here, the second entry. Notice that the Works Cited page is arranged in alphabetical order. So if we take a look at this, here's the full name, Stephanie Kuntz. Here's the name of the article. It was published in Uncommon Threads. It has an editor, and it was published by Longman in 2003 on page 146 to 148. Now, if we scroll back up to that same first paragraph, we can see just below that the student has used another source, this time by Buchanan. If you look back at that Works Cited page, you would have noticed that Buchanan was the first citation that was listed in alphabetical order. Here, we do not have a page number because this was found on a website. So keep that in mind. You only provide a page number when it is a print source. A few sentences down, we have another in-text citation, this time Monroe and Monroe, this time a print source. Monroe and Monroe. This turns out to be a husband and wife team that wrote this. Keep this in mind, if you have more than one author, you must put both of those last names in the parentheses. If we go back to the Works Cited page again, we can scroll down, and there we find the full bibliographic information as well. If I scroll back up to that very first paragraph again, We'll look to see, and it turns out that those are the only sources that are used in the first paragraph. In the second paragraph, we can see again, we have another source. If there's not an author's last name, you go to the next best thing. Often there's a corporate author. In this case, we have a United States. And if we scroll again to the end, we can see that this is put out by the Department of Health and Human Services. So the key thing to remember again is that think about the in-text citations and the Works Cited page. They're like an old married couple. You cannot have one without the other.